five, four, four three, three, two, two one. one. Good morning. Good morning, guys. We are here in the backyard. Before the sun goes down, that it should really be going up because you guys are just waking up. Yeah. Kinda What's weird. today? Today's Tuesday. Tuesday. For us. Early evening for us. Wednesday for you guys. What does that mean? It's Bible study. Bible study tonight. Sister Jennifer. Yay, my favorite. That's what she always says. Yeah. So, um, guys, every Wednesday night, 7 o'clock, we have Bible study live. It's the only time you can interact with us because the, we pre-record the devotion as Monday through Friday. And on Sunday when I preach, I can't be interactive because I'm on the stage preaching, you know. So, Wednesday night is the only time you can really interact with us, um, ask questions, give some insight. So, please join us at 7 o'clock every Wednesday, actually. Mm-hmm. So we are here in our backyard just chilling. We just got home, did a few things, and go visit with your parents today. Yeah, so when we got home, it, you know, it's we're like, you know what? Let's get the devotional cuz we're still cleaning out the garage, and I already know once we get started, it's going to get late and then we're going to be doing the devotional at midnight. And I was just like, you know what? Let's let's do it before we even touch the garage and the light's still out. Let's do it in the backyard. Yep. So, so we are here. We are, guys. Yes, we're here. The dream team is here. I was about to say that. <laughs> That's so yeah. 80s. Is that 80s or 90s? That's 80s. 80s, huh? Yes. Yeah, that's so. Yeah, guys. So hopefully you guys have been having a great week so far. And uh, your week started off right. Um, what happened? Nothing. I was reading a message. Oh. Okay. Sorry. 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 Yeah. So uh, anyways, man, um, we have a really good passage we wanted to get into. Anything else before we get into the passage? <sighs> no, I don't think so. No? Mm -mm. Okay. Um, yeah, I guess we're just going to dive right in. That okay. was kind of a boring intro. We usually talk for a long time. I what know. happened? I don't know my mind's blank right now i literally have like a lot on my mind though like seriously i sat down today while i was at your mom's and i was going through my calendar and i was writing so many things on my calendar because i have a lot going on and mm. you know what the crazy thing is is that two things on my calendar we forgot to do and you even told me is there anything else we need to do before we get home no oh. and we forgot one of them that was so important we forgot to go to rite aid Oh, yeah. Yeah. Do we still have time? Oh, yeah, we do. Yeah, by 9 o'clock. Okay. So, so I guess the day isn't over for us yet. So, yeah. you know, I know this brother probably doesn't watch a, watch the devotionals. He's on my Facebook. I have been friends with him for a few years. And today we are at the Costco and Tracy. He, he's a he's a car detailer. I can't remember the top of, on the top of my head his name. But we have been friends on Facebook for years. And today, in the middle of us talking to the manager, he walks up trying to talk to me. No way. Yeah, he goes, hey, Brother David. And I was like, hey, what's up? And at first, I didn't know who he was. And then I knew who he was. And I'm like, brother, I said, we're in the middle of something right now. Like, like we were talking to a manager about some grievance we had. And in the middle of him walking up, and I was like, man, I'm real sorry I can't talk to you right now. So I'm trying to deal with this. And he goes, all right, brother. And I can't even remember his name to go on his Facebook and apologize. And I don't think he watches this, but I hope I, I'm going to figure out who he is because I don't want to think I'm a jerk. You know, like it's messed up because right when the manager went up to talk to us. Well, you could have thought I was taking care of it. Well, I mean, we could have, should have. I'm not going to do that right now. I'm saying what happened. Yeah. I can't reverse the world. Um, so... Yeah, it was kind of messed up. I did say hi to him, and I did, but I did say, I said, man, I got to really deal with this right now. Yeah. I did say that to him, well, so I didn't brush him off. you know what you can off. do? What? You can go through your 5,000 friends, and you can look I want to say his name is Gabriel, because my son's name is Gabriel. I think that's what his name. So, 
Yeah, yeah. I'm going to go through it. What did you say? Go through my 5,000 <laughs> friends. Well, see, that's why I only have 300 friends, guys. 300 and something friends. So much easier. Thank you, Lord. Sorry. Did that not make it easier? No, just uh, I have a different reason I have 5,000 friends. Oh, well, my philosophy, my, me, just, just the me, my thing about my Facebook is I, like, have to know you, like, in a, a shape, way, or form mm -hmm. in order for them to have all my friends, I guess. Why do I have 5,000 friends? I don't know. No For whatever, no. whatever form you, whatever way, which way or form you have your friends is your way. But I'm no, just but saying. No, but why do you think? I'm asking I'm you. just saying because of me. That's, no, that's I know the that, way I but think. Why do you I don't think know. I do? I'm not going to answer that. You have no idea? I'm not going to answer you. But you have no idea why? I don't know. Really? You have no idea? I'm, I can't. Why would I want to try to answer it? It can be for whatever reason. Maybe because. I passed through a church? Maybe. Maybe because I go and share on podcasts and testimonies and people... It can be for many reasons. Maybe. It can be for who the person you used to be. It can be for this. It can be for that. It can be for many reasons. No, I just told you the reason why in a smart aleck way. That's being a smart aleck? Sort of. No, it's not a smart aleck. It's... That wasn't being a smart... It's, I didn't take it as a smart aleck. It's a non-obtrusive way or intrusive of saying that, like, my page is ministry in whichever capacity that means. So you're saying mine's not ministry? No, yours is. Well, I'll, I'll give you... Uh, <laughs> no, I'll give you a reason why. Like, for instance... Okay. Some people believe... Yours is right, mine is wrong. No, babe, I'm, I'm being serious right now. Okay. Um, um, some people believe that you should have people that don't agree with you on their Facebooks, and I don't agree with that. Like, like the world is chaotic enough, and I want a peaceful Facebook. So there's some people, Christians, that say, oh, you only have Christians on your page, and we, I thought we need to share the gospel with, lo with losers, <laughs> with, with oh, the people that are lost. <laughs> <laughs> with people that are... Oh my God! No, but people say uh, you need to have atheists on there. You need to have this on there. You need to have that, and all their thing is nothing but drama. But they feel that as Christians we can't live in a bubble, so we should, you know, share the gospel with everybody. But when I go on their Facebook page, it is, I mean, just craziness, right? And I don't want that. Like I will kick people out that don't agree that Jesus is Lord. Like I will kick them out because for me. And, and I like the answer you said, actually, because for me, that is that is my world. That's that's the bubble I choose to have because it's my Facebook. You know, so in the same way, I agree how you said you have these 300, 300? A little bit over. I think yeah. it's three, between three and 400 and that's yeah. it, though. I mean, it's just, I don't see nothing wrong with it. I think, like, that's the choice that you made. So it's your Facebook. I can't tell you how to use your Facebook and we can't. Like, I can't, guys, I don't like drama. I don't like debates. If somebody wants to debate just to argue, um, I just kick them off. Like, because I, I literally have a waiting list of 300 people that have been waiting to be my friend for like two years. So if somebody cusses me out, disagrees with me or whatever, I just kick them out because it's, it's my place of refuge, my place of peace. Like, I don't want drama on my Facebook. And some people like drama. Yeah. I, I mean, I... I mean, Facebook is not everything to yeah. me or anything like that, but... But when I go on mine, I want it to be peaceful. Oh, yeah, of course, you know. But the one thing that I do do is every few years, if I haven't really... If I don't communicate or if I haven't talked to somebody on there, if I don't like their stuff and they don't, you know, if there's no... Mm -hmm no existence between me and that person for years or something on yeah. my facebook honestly there's there's no if there's no sense of communication if i really don't know them um after a few years i i literally i'm like what is the whole sense of having them on there if i i do i take them off if i don't personally know them yeah and it because i don't see a sense of of me there's no sense in me really having them on there you know and stuff mm -hmm. because i 
I personally don't really Maybe. know no, them. No, that makes and, sense. And I really, like for me, Facebook, that's where I share my life sometimes. I share, kids you know, my kids, my family. I share the things in my home, my cooking, you know, things, personal, personal experiences. I believe that the moment I open up my home, sharing pictures of things that happen in my home, my cooking, when I share my children's wedding, my excitements and things that happen within my yeah. family, those to me are, are intimate moments of, of my life, you know? Yeah. And I want to share that with people that I, that, I, that I love, that I care, people that I know, um, and people that I know that are happy for me, you know? Like I mean, authentically happy. Yeah, authentically happy for mm -hmm. me. And the people that I do have in my Facebook and everything, man, you know, those are people that I, I know that are going to feel that and are not going to be people that wish bad upon me or anything like that. And I really do have a great deal of respect for them. Mm -hmm. That's why I don't have thousands of people or anything like mm -hmm. that. For me, it's it's genuine for the people that I have on there. My, mine, though, mine isn't public. So the only way to friend me is if you're of a friend of a friend. Yeah. So mine is, is not public because then you get just crazy, crazy friend requests. Yeah, I would believe so. Yeah, um, yeah mine I'd, stuff's I'd, private. I've been there, done that years ago, and it is insane, right? And then another thing too, guys, is that, don't get me wrong, I have a lot of non-believers on my Facebook. Yeah. You don't have to be a Christian to be decent. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I so agree with that. I have a lot of non-Christians that, man, I got, I got people that used to rap with me. I got people I knew before. Um, so I, I don't just have Christians. I have a lot of non-Christians, but... You don't have to be a Christian to be decent. And we don't have to you have know? the same the same beliefs, the same yeah. you know, religions, the same of everything. I believe that if people can have mutual respect for one another, um, I think that you can respect one another, you know, and yeah. and, and I think that's important. Yeah, because my my I I got I got people that are homies, I got people that are active, non active, people that are just all walks of life. Yeah. It's it's what I don't like is when they start putting like the groserias, like the, how do you say it like in English? Like, uh, like just nasty. Like, yeah. like dudes, disrespectful. Disrespectful toward women or just women and sexual. And I'm just like, man, I ain't trying to see all that, you know? And um, that's what I don't like, you know? Yeah. And, and then like, sometimes I'll have people that are my, that I made my friends, that they were Christians. To me, this is this is even worse. Is that, and then they fall away from God, and now I get to hear all their spew on why they hate God and hate church and hate Christians and hate the, and then, and it's just ridiculous. Yeah, it's sad when you do see the down the down spirals. Yeah. and, and I'll everything. try to reach them, and nah, and I'm like, you know what? It just, you know, it's sad. I don't need this. I'm, I'm not trying to open my timeline just to get drama. You yeah. Know? So, anyways, we did end up talking about something. We'll see there. So now we can get into, now we can get into yeah. our, our word. We are going into First Peter, two, chapter two. Where's it at? Verse. We're going eleven to twelve. Yeah. You guys, we, ready? <clears throat> oh look, I got a leaf on me. All right, guys. It's really nice out here. Yeah, it is. It feels good. All that. There's no more ashes. Remember a few days ago? Okay. It says, Beloved, I beg you as sojourners and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lusts, which war against the soul, having your conduct honorable among the Gentiles, that when they speak against you as evildoers, they may by your good works, which they observe, glorify God in the day of visitation. All right, David reads out of the New King James. I'll be reading out of the message. It says, friends, this world is not your home, so don't make yourselves cozy in it. Don't indulge your ego at the expense of your soul. Live an exemplary life among the natives so that your actions will refute their prejudices. Then they'll be won over to God's side and be there to join in the celebration when he arrives. Amen. So yeah. it's just two verses, and um, I just want to quickly just break this stuff down because I think it's really important, and it's a reminder for all of us, right, is that we are passing through. This is not home. We're passing through. 
You know, and, and that's what it's saying in the very beginning. It says, and, and even Peter is saying this. He's saying, beloved, like, he's saying like, a, um, like, like, guys, I'm saying this in love. Yeah. Like, I'm saying this in all respect. I'm saying this in all love. He goes, I beg you. I beg you as, as pilgrims to abstain from the fleshly lust which war against the soul. Like, and I like, even I like the way the, the message worded it today. Friends, this is not your home. So don't make yourself cozy. You know, and I think that is something we need to continually remind ourselves as Christians. You know, that sometimes we indulge too much in this life. We invest too much into this life, into this world. I'm not saying to walk around oblivious to laws and to things that are happening around you, like, it's important to know what's going on in your community. It's, it's important to know what's going on in your state and even in your nation. It's important, right? But some people get so invested as if you're going to stay here forever. This well, is not a forever place. Well, I think it's, it's, it's almost like when you're, um, when you're renting a home or when you're buying. You Perfect know? example. I think a lot of the times people, you know, it's perspective. David says this all the time, perspective. A lot of the times when people rent homes, they don't put the eff effort into renting a home because they figure, oh, well, we're just renting it. I don't own it anyway. Yeah, I don't own it. So what's the big deal? You know, we, we rent our home here, but you know, we, we love to make our home as comfortable and as, as to the best, you know, that we, we can make it look, you know, because we're still living in it while we're here. I forget we rent sometimes. You know, and I, th <laughs> and I think our perspective is, is that we still got to take care of it while we're here. You know, mm -hmm. we got to keep the landscape up. We got to make it beautiful. We got to, you know, keep it clean and we got to keep it up and everything. And if we do that, man can can you imagine imagine what our own home would really look like once mm -hmm. we do have our own home and i think that sometimes when something is not ours we tend to you know not care for it and it's the same thing we tell our children guys you know you guys don't appreciate it because it's given to you but the moment you have to go out and you have to earn it yourself you tend to want to appreciate it more because you worked harder for it and when it's given to you you guys don't appreciate it if we teach our kids that then it's the same it's the same thing that we ourselves should um, think about it for ourselves I'm, I'm actually glad you brought that up because what i was saying was the opposite of that but i'm glad i'll tell you why because i'm saying this is not our home we're here temporary but there's a balance in that. Yeah. And I like the, the fact that Sharon said, like, for instance, our house here, we're, we rent. But that doesn't mean that we could care less about this and not even make it presentable to ourselves. You know, so I think there's a balance. Like, somebody could even say, well, why should I eat healthy? I'm, I'm in this body temporary. Well, because God gave it to you for, for a time as that you're mm -hmm. here. So... I like that you brought that up because there is a balance. Even though we are pilgrims in this life, even though we're passing through in this life, we can't check ourselves out. We can't not care. We have we to can't make the best not, of, of yeah, what we have yeah. here. So I'm glad you brought that up because it does bring balance to this. That, But here's the thing, right, is, is we got to understand as Christians, our roots are not in the United States or California. Our roots are in the, the kingdom, kingdom of God. Yes. You know, so ultimately... We have to do, first of all, what is most important to the kingdom and then let that trickle down into how we live our life while we're here. Yeah. You know, like in the same way, doesn't when, when you rent from place to place, doesn't the way you carry yourself to your landlord, doesn't that carry into a future landlord? Absolutely. Your references. Exactly. So what's going to be your references in the kingdom while you were here on earth? Yeah. Absolutely. You know, that's a good point. It, it's actually, actually, it's it's almost like a, your judgment day. Oh, snap. You know, if, if you really think about it, mm -hmm. the reference is actually judgment. That's the way I would look at it. That's like the verse we read the other day where it says that every word. Yeah. 
that comes out of your it, mouth. It, it's 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 like when you're going be before a judge, you know, mm. when it's actually everything is being read back to you. You were saying yeah. it the other day, yesterday or the day before. Yeah, it's actually your own your own. Um, what is it that you were saying that was being read back to you? Your own words. Yeah, um, your your own uh, transcript. Your own transcripts are being read back to you, and that's actually your it's it's being referenced back to you. Yeah. And those are the things that God's going to say. You know, what did you do with the little that I gave you? You know, what did you do with what I gave you? And you're going to be well. It wasn't mine anyways, Lord. Can can you imagine if if you came back and say, well? It wasn't mine anyways. And he said, well, but I gave that to you. What did you do with it? it I mean, can you imagine if he says, I, I, I gave that to you so that you can care for it. I gave, yeah. you, I gave you that child. I gave you a son and a daughter. Like he entrusts our children with us mm -hmm. so that we can be good examples for them. Can you imagine that, guys? Yeah. That's huge. Like our children are entrusted into our hands so that we can be a good example to them. We're supposed to be a good example unto them and he's entrusting us with, with his children. You know, all that he gives us, he's entrusting us. Even the simple little things, that he, even the little things. We think that to us, they, they may be, we look at it like, well, you know, they're big things to him, and to us, they may look little, but they're huge, guys. And he's going to be like, what about that that I gave you? All right, guys, we're back. Technical difficulties. We had to change the battery. It has these big light, big batteries, and it died. Yep. So anyways, um, yeah, I like that verse. I'm going to read it again, then we're going to go to the next verse. Beloved, I beg you as sojourners and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lusts which war against the soul. Now the next verse. It says, having your conduct honorable. So, so the first one is about us. Like, we're just pilgrims here. Now this is how we are to others. It says, having your conduct, the way you are, honorable among the Gentiles, that when they speak against you as evildoers, they may by your good works which they observe, which they watch, Glorify God in the day of visitation. Amen. Read it. It says, live an exemplary, an exemplary life among the natives so that your actions will refute their prejudices. Then they'll be won over to God's side and be there to join in the celebration when he arrives. Wow. You know what that means, guys? That when somebody talks evil of you, your job is not to defend yourself, not to win the argument, but to win them over for Jesus. Yeah. And the only way we will ever be able to battle hate and evil is with the love of Christ. That is the only way. You know, and, and I love the way that says it actually too, is that live an exemplary life among the natives so that your, your actions will refute their prejudices. In other words, whatever they have against you, live in a way that you're going to prove them wrong by your actions, not your words. Because anybody can talk. Anybody can say things. You know, and it's like, that's why, again, I'm going to use a verse I always say. And I know people might, at the Church of House of Rest, they're, they're like, you're always saying that, Pastor. He who puts his hand to the plow and looks back is not fit for the kingdom of God. Mm. So if somebody's going to talk evil of you, Here's the thing, if you know you're living your life right, you know with a good conscience that you are doing everything towards the Lord and in honor of the Lord and honorable to Him, I don't gotta, I don't gotta stop and argue with the people on the right or on the left, people that want to talk evil, people that want to do these things, because you know what? All that's going to cause is an argument, and then it's about me defending myself, when in reality it's, it's our example that maybe, just maybe, they'll keep watching. And when they see, oh man, this person really does love the Lord, maybe it'll actually bring them to belief. Yeah. Isn't that the point? Absolutely. That's why it says it. That way they'll be won over to God's side and be there to join in on the celebration when Jesus arrives. Yeah. That's the best thing, man. The best scenario is that all those that cause evil to you, speak evil of you, you know, uh, try to damage your character, the best thing that could happen is that you stay 
exemplary in honor of God and you win them over to Christ. I know that's one thing that's really hard for women. Ladies, I know it's so short-tempered. You know, we get so quick to want to go start talking to other women and be like, I can't believe she's talking about me. I can't this. And and it's so easy to go talk to um, the girlfriends or to go talk to the, the women and to go, you know, it's so easy to do that, to get on the phone and, and you know, start talking to, to other women. Men, you know, it's it's very rare that you find men talking about other other people like that. They well, they're starting to now. You, well, yeah, it's, you, <laughs> nowadays you do see comadres and men, you know. <laughs> but, um, you know, it's easier when you see women do that. And that's that's one thing that you, you don't want to do. Um, sometimes it's better just to be observant you know be observant and sometimes it's better just to stay silent guys and just to be like you know lord you know my heart you know my heart you know my intention search my intentions and search my heart lord um and sometimes it's okay because you know sometimes there's there's moments that we may have done something and that we don't know if it was ever offensive or not and that's where we do got to take it to the lord and be like lord if I've ever done something or said something, you know, um, Lord, search my heart. Show me. Show me that if I if I was ever offensive in any way or show me if I ever and, you know, and he'll give you that peace and show you if there was or there wasn't. And if there wasn't, you know what, then you know what, just hand it over to him and just stay silent. And you know what, you just keep being the light that you need to be. You just keep being that example, because you know what, those people the Lord will show those people and that day will come. I know that for a fact. The day will come Well, he will, he will, what he will do is he will bring it to light unto those people and he will bring conviction to their hearts. Mm -hmm. He really will. If that's, if that's what needs to be done, the conviction will come into their hearts and there, there will be a, a reconciliation that will happen. Yeah. And and I think that that's something that's so important. Um, and you know what? And and that peace will be will be made between you know both both people. And I think that that's something that's very very special. Um, but it's not going to happen on your time or that person's time. It's going to happen in God's timing. Yeah. It has to. So do you know? Sometimes it's better just to stay silent instead of starting to take it here and there because that's how rumors and gossip get started. Mm -hmm. It really is. You know, there's one thing the scripture says, right? And this is, as non-believers, as believers, we all got to keep this in mind. The Bible says, and because the Word of God says it, it will be true, that everything that's done in the dark will be brought out to the light. Amen. And, and that, to me, that's a warning that we should always just, you know, seek after God with an open heart and deal with people with an open heart. Yeah. Because if not... Sooner or later, light is going to shine what happened in the dark. But unfortunately, many times, somebody could talk evil of you and lie on you. And, and I, I'm going to say, in the words of Jesus in Matthew, chapter 5, verse 11, and we're going to end this, guys, because we got to get to write it, <laughs> is, is this. This is in Jesus' own words. Matthew 5? Ma yeah, Ma Matthew 5, 11. Okay. Look what Jesus himself says. Blessed are you. When they revile and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake, rejoice and be exceedingly glad. Verse 12, for great is your reward in heaven, for so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Read it. Mm. It says, not only that, count yourselves blessed every time people put you down or throw you out or speak lies about you to discredit me. What it means is that the truth is too close for comfort and that they are uncomfortable. You can be glad when this happens. Give a cheer even. For though they don't like it, I do. And all heaven applauds. And know that you are in good company. My prophets and witnesses have always gotten into this kind of trouble. Amen. Yeah. Amen. You know, so the best thing you can do, guys, if somebody does talk falsely about you and and here's the thing, right? Um, sometimes, here's the thing, though. Some people do do things underhandedly. 
and then they get attacked for it, then they get mad and like, God, this person, well, the thing was, you did something underhandedly. Yeah. I mean, it is what it is. And mm -hmm. God brought to the light what you did in the dark. Yeah. But if you are in a position where you didn't do nothing and somebody's falsely accusing you, the best thing you can do is pray for that person. Yeah. Here's why. This is a strategy, right? Here's the thing, right? Is that Satan does not want you praying or interceding for anyone out there. So if every time somebody attacks you, if you start praying for that person, that's going to get the enemy angry. Yeah. So what you're doing is you're telling the enemy, go ahead, go ahead. The more that person gives me hate, the more I'm going to intercede for that person in prayer. Absolutely. And that person's going to get saved. And the enemy will back off because he doesn't want that person saved. Yeah. And you keep praying. You just keep praying, man. Yeah. You know, so. But and that, it, what that's doing is you're speaking life. That's right. You speak you're life. You're speaking life and you just keep speaking life and keep speaking life. And you know what? It, it, the more you keep speaking life into that person, the more of an impact they're going to have into someone else because mm -hmm. they're going to, you know, they're having more and more and more of that seed planted in their life. And guess what? And in turn, they're going to be a blessing unto someone else and they're going to bear fruit. They're going to bear fruit and they're not going to, they don't know it at the moment, but trust me, yeah. you're planting a seed that is going to bear fruit. That's what's going to happen. Amen. You think the enemy is going to like that? No, he's not. So guys, keep, keep planting that seed, keep interceding and uh, keep being a blessing. Yeah. Amen. So um, that's pretty much it. Hopefully you enjoyed this. Hopefully you got something out of this. We do this Monday through Friday if this is your first time on here. Guys, I, I always forget to say this, but please, um, if you're not subscribed, please subscribe. That way you get our hit the notification bell. That way every time we do these or on Wednesday or Sunday, you get the notification and a reminder. Um, if you are subscribed, please hit like. It just helps. It helps YouTube do the um, the algorithm so the more people that like it the more they like oh other people maybe will like it and then they spread it out to more people Amen. so that's the best thing that you can do to help us we're not asking for a tithe we're not asking for an offering your offering is the like button Amen. <laughs> that's your offering amen we yeah. love you guys have a beautiful morning and uh we'll see you guys soon bye All right. guys bye